Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. Hi there, folks. Dan Thompson here. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We have a great show lined up. We'll have Dr. Jan Shear from Iowa State University join us to talk about dairy cow lameness. It proves to be a great show. I'm glad that you joined us. Stay tuned. We're cow-calf producers from Northeast Colorado. We run about 300 commercial cows and calves and uh, sell them at the sale barn in October. Since we've been given multi-min, our reproduction rate is about 95%, which is pretty good for grassland, and we run bulls, and we do not AI. That means an extra 15 calves at sale time. We've been using the multi-min product for three years. We are really happy with it and recommend it to anybody in this business. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normos and LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Jan, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Folks, this is Dr. Jan Shear, and, and Dr. Shear is a professor and extension specialist for uh, uh, the Iowa State College of Veterinary Medicine, and it's a treat to have him on the show. He's known internationally for dairy cow lameness and, and veterinary medicine, and and just thank you very much for taking time out to be with us. It's an, it's an honor. So let's let's start out with dairy cow lameness, and and what are some of the things that when you're sitting here first, you know, you know, how do we define the problem? Lameness is uh, basically anything that affects the mobility uh, of an animal. It's uh, normally defined as uh, uh, any kind of a condition that will cause uh, an abnormal gait, usually defined as an animal that is uh, lame in one or more uh, limbs. And um, that's the predominant way that we um, see um, the problem in, in most of our herd situations. Okay. And, and it's, it's one of those things in a, in a dairy situation that's, you know, mastitis, scouring calves, lameness. I mean, it's, it's a very, um, you know, it's pretty prevalent. Yeah. from can a be. Very prevalent disease. And uh, at least uh, some of the work that's been done uh, defines uh, uh, prevalence rates of somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of all animals uh, in dairies uh, today uh, on average. Uh, and so the problem, and when we look at incidence, for example, incidence can be as high as 30 to 50% in some herds. Now, obviously there's herds that do a lot better, but lameness is uh, certainly one of the most costly conditions, uh, clinical conditions that we see in dairy cattle uh, by far, and also um, uh, one of the most important from a welfare standpoint as well. You bet. You bet. Well, what are some of the, the uh, and, and, you know, we don't have any specific order that we have to go through this. It's just uh, some of the things that, that we generally talk about, but what are some of the clinical signs that, I mean, I, I, we obviously know the limp and cow, but what are some of the more milder or, or less obvious signs? Yeah, that's, that's important because those are the kinds of con, uh, behavioral things that we look for. Uh, in animals that are showing maybe subclinical uh, forms of this condition. Uh, catalyst prey animals naturally will hide their discomfort. And so as a consequence of that, uh, we look for other subtle signs, more subtle signs uh, uh, of lameness to really uh, identify it. One can be uh, arching of the back. One can be bobbing of the head uh, when they put down the, uh, the painful limb. Uh, we can also see postural uh, changes and when looking at cattle from the rear. Uh, so there are a number of other behavioral uh, things that we look at in terms of uh, lameness that can kind of give us an indication of when this is occurring at a, you know, at a subclinical or early stage. You bet. Well, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk with more with Dr. Shear about lameness and dairy cattle. 
beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jan Shear. And Dr. Shear is a professor at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, which is my alma mater. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, he's also extension, has an extension position there. And uh, Jan, thanks a million for, for being here and spend some time talking about a very important topic. My pleasure, for sure. So let's talk about some of the, what are some of the main causes of lameness that you see in dairies? I think you can break them down into roughly uh, three different categories. One would be um, individual uh, lameness that, causes, uh, that affects the individual digit or claw, as we might uh, refer to it. Uh, we also have infectious uh, disorders, the foot skin, and then there are a number of disorders that are associated with uh, problems that are above the hoof or what we might refer to as upper leg uh, lameness conditions. Okay, and so, you know, kind of talk me through, give me some examples of, of what we're going to see within those categories. Some of the things that, you know, foot rot, uh, laminitis, well, 90% of lameness that occurs in cattle occurs uh, in the foot. Most of that, 90% of it, in fact, uh, occurs in rear feet. And somewhere in that 70 90% affects the outer claw of rear feet. And the <laughs> that most gets it narrowed down pretty it down. quick, doesn't it? <laughs> and that's particularly true for cattle that are housed on, on concrete or hard surfaces. Uh, of course, it's a very unnatural surface for, for cows, and so, um, you know, they're certainly designed much better for earthen surfaces, so um, that's a part of our problem. And the kinds of conditions we would see as far as claw disorders or indis individual disorders of the digit would be uh, ulcers, white line disease, and of course there's always things that can cause traumatic lesions of the soul. That might be stepping on a nail or it might be stepping on a stone or something like that. So those constitute the majority of the kinds of conditions that we see uh, that affect individual claws. And then we also have in our large dairy systems today uh, some problems with excessive wear of claws that uh, creates uh, for us also some ulcer problems in claws. And that's become and is becoming a bigger and bigger uh, issue for a lot of our dairies. Sure, sure. So then when we move to, to some of these more infectious mm -hmm. types, what, what are some of the things that you're seeing as in infectious types of lameness? Again, I think we look at the environment of the dairy cow, it's um, because of the fact that uh, we have them in confinement situations, 
we're looking at uh, conditions like digital dermatitis, foot rot, uh, interdigital dermatitis, and erosion of claw horn. And those are very important conditions as well, and true infectious uh, disorders of the foot skin. Okay. And so, so then we, we spend some time with the crews. We're, we're coming up on our break here. But, um, you know, some of the things as far as treatment and prevention, obviously the prevention is the key. Uh, prevention is the key. Uh, there are uh, a number of things that we can do. Uh, first of all, make sure that our facilities are designed right. Flooring is uh, surfaced correctly. Make sure that we've got a comfortable place for cows to lie down. Manage our rations so that we avoid uh, problems with rumen acidosis uh, and laminitis. Yep. Uh, and I, so. th I, think, I think that, that we'll continue on with those. And as we come back in the break, maybe dig down a little bit deeper. Great. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back in a minute. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Ultimate is one of those products you can use to uh, get the ultimate uh, performance out of cattle. Around 90 to 95 percent of our calves are uh, either AI or embryo transplant. Uh, since we've started using the Multiman, we're up around 70 to 75 percent uh, conception on our first AI service. And a product like this is very beneficial for us. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jan Shearer, who is a professor at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, and he's also extension veterinarian. And, and Jan, we're talking about lameness in dairy cattle and infectious disorders of the foot skin. Sounds very technical. <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about with this? Yeah, we're talking about predominantly foot rot and uh, hairy heel warts, right? Okay. Foot rot is a very important condition in uh, both beef and dairy cattle. It uh, is a condition that starts usually with a lesion in the interdigital skin or a cut in the interdigital skin that secondarily becomes infected. We get tremendous swelling of the foot. And uh, it's, it sometimes can have some very uh, bad secondary complications, such as uh, involvement of, of a joint in one of the uh, uh, digits. And that, that can be, lead to some really um, chronic consequences. Yeah, the digital dermatitis or hairy heel warts is its uh, the more common name, the more uh, the name that most people would know it by. 
um, is really a serious problem in the dairy industry. Um, we've struggled for many years. It's been around since 1975, maybe a little earlier. Uh, and we continue to try to uh, uh, manage this thing predominantly with um, uh, foot baths and with uh, topical medications and so forth, but it's a, it's a really tough one to manage. And uh, unfortunately, in recent time, we're starting to see this become a very significant problem in feed yards where it's even more difficult to apply those same kinds of uh, treatment approaches. Uh, it's just not convenient to, to manage it that way. And so, uh, Everyone's on the hunt for a, uh, a vaccine, <laughs> sure. so hopefully we'll get there in the near future. Well, uh, I think that vaccines for that or vaccine, you know, you can't manage from a bottle. You and I both know that. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> this is one that you have to uh, manage the environment with as well, and the, the dairy industry is struggling to do a better job of that. And the, I would say surely the ones that are successful in managing the disease along with these other uh, uh, treatment modalities are, are the ones that are, that are trying to manage the environments better as well. Absolutely, that's uh, important. Mineral yeah. or <clears throat> nutritional components to this? Most definitely, uh, uh, trace mineral nutrition is important. Uh, yeah, nutrition has a, a, a key role in uh, making this skin have greater integrity and greater resistance to these problems, so absolutely. Yeah. When we come back from the break, we'll kind of do a, you know, progression, maybe talk about some of the preventative measures that we see in, in dairies and preventing lameness. But it's just, like I say, it's an honor to have you on the show and for you to take time out. It means a lot. Uh, it's great to be here. I really appreciate it. Great. We appreciate you watching as well. And we'll come back with more with Dr. Jan Shear right after the break. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. Interest in growing the oilseed crop canola is rapidly rising in the Central Plains, and in partnership with seed company Monsanto, K-State is on the verge of releasing two new glyphosate-tolerant canola varieties well-suited for the region. Kansas State's Mike Stom talks about their attributes. I would say uh, winter survival was probably one of the, the key traits of these varieties, and they've also been very competitive in terms of yield with the current varieties that are out there. Uh, 352 also has the sulfonylurea herbicide carryover tolerance trait. That gives wheat producers that are using these long residual uh, sulfonylurea herbicides in their, their wheat production uh, to plant canola the following year. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center, and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dan Shear, who's a professor at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, and we're tickled to death to have him here. We're talking about dairy lameness. And, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about some of the prevention, the care, the, you know, what do we need to do to, to try to curb some of these things from happening? Uh, I think one of the most important things is um, 
uh, owners uh, need to have a commitment to managing foot care. They, they need to see it as, uh, as an important uh, a problem in their operations that needs to be dealt with. And that would include then making sure that uh, they have a regular um, a foot care program in place. Uh, that would include either an outside trimmer maybe, or it could be people that are trained on farm uh, to deal with these things. Uh, I, they need to be <clears throat> trained. All those folks need to have some training, I believe. Uh, foot care is not a simple thing to manage. There's some really complicated issues there. Um, but I think with a little training, uh, uh, we can really make a major difference in the amount of lameness that we have and certainly the impact that it's going to have on our, not only our performance, but also on animal welfare. So when we start talking about <laughs> foot trimming and, and some of those as, as preventative or treatment, uh, you know, how often do, I mean, and how do you determine which animal is, is going to be trimmed? Yeah, that, it really depends a lot. I have kind of learned over the years, uh, there is, seems to be no one size fits all when it comes to that. It seems like in certain types of environments, uh, such as the Southwest, uh, where we have a lot of dry lot, uh, feet tend to grow a little faster, um, and have a little less wear, uh, possibly. And so um, the foot growth and wear issue becomes really critical to how much trimming may need to be done. And then, of course, the other factor is, is uh, lameness varies from farm to farm. And so um, we need to place a high priority on managing lameness disorders um, as they occur. And so uh, that needs to be the first priority. And then the trimming program can kind of help prevent some of those kinds of things, uh, as well as some of these other can, uh, things that we've talked about a little earlier in terms of managing these infectious skin disorders. That would be cleaner environments, cleaner dry environments, and then also um, uh, foot bathing uh, as, uh, as necessary. You bet. Well, I think it's important for, for, you know, like we'd talked during the break of creating the culture of, of on a farm or on, you know, it's not something that you can just check a box and it happens. Abs absolutely right. Uh, uh, on the operations that keep uh, lameness to a minimum, you can see a clear commitment on the part of the ownership, uh, the managers. It's just, uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, the culture that is created, as you say, the culture that they create uh, for having good foot care. Well, I sure appreciate the culture that you create uh, within our professional organizations and within our industries and, and uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate everything you do. Oh, thank you very much, Dan. Thanks. Thanks, folks, for joining us on Doc Talk. If you want to know more about the show or see an archived episode, you can go to us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University. You've been watching Doc Talk. We enjoyed having you with us today, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. My name's Tim Todd, uh, along with my wife Chris, we own and operate Green Mountain Angus Ranch out of Rygate, Montana. We've been in the Angus business for about 30 years now. We sell about 300, 350 bulls a year. We have a production sale in the fall, November, the third Friday in November and we have a uh, private treaty sale in the spring. We've been using the Multi-Min product for about seven years now. Uh, we started using it uh, off the recommendation of our embryologist. He suggested that we give our recip cows a shot uh, prior to putting embryos in. Uh, we had a real good uh, conception rate that spring and we've been using the product ever since. Uh, this area of Montana can be a little deficient in copper. That's one of the three main uh, minerals in Multi-Min. And so with that, we brought our copper levels in our cattle up to where they need to be. We've seen an increase of uh, five to six percent in our conception rate on our, in our AI program. You start getting 30 to 40 more AI calves uh, 
in a year. Uh, we're showing a, a huge return by using the product uh, in, that, in those regards. We give our cows a shot of multi-min pre-calving for the immune system of the unborn calf. She will transfer the minerals into the unborn calf through the blood system. When the calf is born, he has a, a high level of mineral in his liver, which will help with his immune system. Uh, in our particular operation, we uh, lease a lot of pasture, so it's real important for these cattle to stay healthy. Uh, we don't get the opportunity to to check them like we'd like to. Uh, uh, the least sickness, the, the least foot rot we have, the better off we are. So uh, with the use of multi-men, uh, that's two of the big benefits we've seen. Healthier cattle, less maintenance.